Good morning, St. Luke. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank him. Thank him for letting us come out this morning in our right mind and active of our limbs. Now we're going to hear from this wonderful choir, and they will take us further in the service. God bless you. You come to do. I don't know what you come to do. See, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. See, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. See, I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Well, I come to clap. For you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me an inheritance reserved for those who fear your name. May he reign under God's protection forever. May your unfailing love and faithfulness watch over him. Everyone, then I will sing praises to your name forever as I fulfill my vows each day. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, doers, and readers of his holy word. Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go to the word of prayer. 
When we pray, we should say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day for our daily bread. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that which is evil. For dying is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord, we come this morning as humble as we know how. Lord, we come thanking you for all the many blessings you restored upon us. Lord, we thank you for keeping watch of us last night while we slept and slumbered. Not knowing that we was in the world, Lord, you allowed no hurt, harm, or danger to come to us. Then sometime bright and early this morning, Lord, you touched us with the distinguished finger of love. Cause our eyes come on to behold a brand new day. A new day in which we've never seen before and a day that we never see again. And we just want to say we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on the cross that we may have right to the tree of life. And for, Lord, you know you said in your word, we have not because we ask not. But right now, Lord, we come asking you to bless us. Bless us the only way you know we stand in need of. We ask you to continue to bless our homes. Bless our families. Lord, we ask a special blessing for our kids. Lord, bless your bereaved family all over this land and country. Continue to create in them more faith and less fear, and that you will continue to build them up where they may be weak and prop them up where they are torn down. And continue to instill in them that you're still God and you're God all by yourself, and that you can do everything but fail. Lord, continue to bless our nation, bless our leaders. We ask that you let them lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways, let them get an understanding in you. We thank you right now, Lord, for all that you've done and all you're about to do. Lord, bless this service, bless our pastor, bless his family. And, Lord, as we go about our day, we ask that you would give us a special bond, and we're bonding so close together that perhaps one of us can't fall without the other one. And, Lord, we'll be so quick to give you the honor and give you the praise. Lord, we come thank you right now for all that you've done and all you're about to do in our lives. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
Let me see you put your hands together. And you might as well stand on your feet. You in here. Let's make one big choir. We're gonna say this. You are good.
he will fight your battle. If you keep still, he'll fight your battle. No matter what the battle may be, he'll fight that battle. Do you believe he will today? Has he ever fought one for you today? He will fight your battle. If you keep still, hold your peace, he'll fight your battle. He'll help you overcome whatever you're in today. He's able to do it exceedingly, abundantly more. We can even ask a thing. So no matter whatever battle you're in, you don't have to fight. He said, be still and let him fight your battle. The word said, this battle that belongs to God. This is not one you need to bat- you need to fight in. Only God can help you get through what you're in right now. To God be the glory for being in this place today. Aren't you glad that you're alive? Aren't you grateful that you're still here? That your family is still intact? That you still have your right mind? That your heart is all right? Your blood is flowing? Your body is healed? Your body has been delivered? Aren't you glad just to be in this place? Even online, you ought to be giving God praise. Even online today. To God be the glory for all he has done for us today. I don't know about you today, but there comes a time in all of our lives when we ought to come to a point that we need worship. I said we need to worship. God is not on an ego trip where he got to have your worship. We may not, he may not have to have our, but we surely need to worship him. Worship is not for God. Worship is for us. And the Bible says that everything that have breath ought to praise his name. And God deserves all of our praise. What a joy to be here on this first Sunday in June. Uh, and, and thank God for the ability to be in the house of God on this day. And those who are online, those who are present, to God be the glory for you and for your family today. Amen, amen, amen. You made your way out. And since you made your way out, then you ought to want to have church. Uh, since God has waking us this morning, then you really ought to be willing to give him praise and honor. This is our hug minister opportunity that you can embrace someone. You can speak to someone that you haven't spoken to in a week. And we are still here to praise his name. Can you do that this morning all over the building as you worship this morning in the spirit of
we know that Jesus will do any and everything that we ask in his name. Amen. Yes. Has he done anything for anyone? Yes. Has he ever healed anybody's body? Yes. Has he ever made a way out of no way? Yes. Has he kept you in perfect peace yes. because your mind was on him? Yes. Now listen, don't fool me today. Because I serve an awesome God. Yes. Do you serve the same God? Yes. And because I serve an awesome God, I know that he, in his word, says that I will do exceedingly, abundantly. And watch this. He says, and above all <laughs> that you could ever ask a thing. So because of that, because we serve an awesome God. We're just going to do just a little verse or two of this song this morning. If you all know it, help us this morning. This choir sounds amazing today, don't they? We thank God this morning for pastor and the word that's about to come this morning. Amen. I thank God for my friends that came to join us this morning. Sister Linda and her husband, Brother Larry. She started off saying, I don't know what you come to do. And that's, a, and that's a good statement because I don't know what you come to do. Some folk come to spectate, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. So as we get ready to do, y'all pray for us. Amen. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Say with me. me when I'm wrong. Strength where I'm weak. Strength when I am weak. Forever. Let's say it again. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. He strength where I'm weak. Strength where I am weak. Forever he will reign. My God, my God is awesome. He's awesome. Awesome. Yes, he's awesome. 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 My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He's awesome. Awesome. Anybody know God to be an awesome God? Savior of the whole world. Giver of salvation. By his stripes. My God is awesome. Today I am forgiven. His grace. I come to praise his holy name. Come on. All over the building. Say no, you can say he's awesome. awesome. He's awesome.
inside of us and God is such an awesome God uh, that he gave you another chance uh, to give him a praise and honor that only God deserves amen as we remember this morning as we come and we pray for those who are shut in those who are sick certainly pray for Casey Tima uh, Maxine Tima uh, praying for those who are on our uh, list uh, prayer list this morning uh, certainly that God will do exceedingly uh, abundantly for their life, that God can bring a blessing and a healing uh, within their own lives. We're praying for minister to be a war today, uh, that God will continue to sustain and God will keep him uh, today in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray today as part of our worship, as giving is always a part of worship, and as you come in, you can give or you exit you can give. There will be men on each side of every exit uh, that you can give on your going and coming. And also, Gillify. You can give uh, uh, by tap, give, and it's done. In a few moments, all of that will be taken care of. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise his name today. If you get your Bibles, we'll move fast if that's what you want to do. I'm going to do what you want to do. If you don't want to move fast, we won't move fast. Amen, amen. If you say amen, uh, then they'll get me out of here early. I'll get you out of here early. If you don't say amen, I'm going to take my time. Amen. 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 If you stand for the book of Genesis chapter 12. Uh, We're early in a way. Amen. 
Genesis chapter 12 is on the screen this morning. Can we all read that together? The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. three. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you wrong. All the families on the earth will be blessed. Amen. Finally, verse four. And so Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Amen. You may be seated. God, speak through my mind. Speak through my body. Give me the word to encourage someone that's sitting on the pew. And God, there's someone who's online. Give the word that would uplift their head. Somebody today is totally depressed. But you can handle that. Someone is overburdened with grief, and you can handle that. Somebody is in the hospital right now, and you can handle that. Somebody's mental capacity is not what it needs to be, but you can handle that. Because, God, we come today to tell you thank you uh, that you woke us up this morning. Thank you that you started us on our way. Thank you, God, that we still have, are in our right mind. And we come to give you praise and glory for what you've done. We pray today, God, that you would uplift this worship experience. Uh, that we walk out of here better than we came in. God, that when we move out of this place, we'll move outside of our comfort zone. And if we didn't praise, we'll praise you like we never before. Because we look back over our life, we can see so much that the Lord has done for us. And all we can do is just come tell you thank you. We can agree with the choir. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're everlasting God. You're first and you're last. You're omega and you are, you are the alpha and omega of our lives. And we come, God, to tell you thank you for it. If you don't do anything else for us, God, you've already done enough for us. And we come to thank you for families that are represented here today. We lift you up, God. We give you praise. We give you honor for the magnifying, magnifying of your name, God. We come to do it right now. We thank you right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. The people of God said amen. 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 Moving out of your comfort zone. Moving out of your comfort zone the second part of this conversation. When we look at this, uh, in order to get ahead in this life, sometimes God was sent us from which, which is familiar to that which is unfamiliar. It is one thing for you to move out of your comfort zone, but it's a whole nother thing when God sends you out of your comfort zone. Today's text is not Abram moving, but God moving him. My brothers and sisters, many of us would rather stay in the mundane. We would rather stay complacent in our environment to, and to oppose trusting God. Some people are comfortable being where they are and not willing to receive more from God. You're crossing over. There are many who are crossing over from high school to college, from college to a work, to a job. That is, and they have to come to a place and they're going to an unfamiliar territory. How am I going to survive? How, how would I live in an unfamiliar territory? 
but it's, it's familiar because many individuals would stay in a high-paying job. They'll stay in a job that's not giving them what they want because they're comfortable where they are. They're comfortable mentally, they're comfortable physically, emotionally, and, and rather than seek another job, they'll rather stay where they are making less than making more. Priest Moraine. Uh, but, but, but it's more fulfilling than, than are those who are barely making his meat, but yet they would not seek a job that would be able to bless their whole family because I'm comfortable where I am. This is, this, is, uh, this is safe. This is, this is secure. And, and there are people on the pew this morning. The pews are populated with comfortable people. Yes, they are. They're, they're, they're. The, the pews were, were, were comfortable with people that will, will just say, well, I'll just come to church. I'll just stay online where I don't really have to praise and worship. I can do it by myself. But there comes a time in our life. Where well, being comfortable is just not enough. Uh, where well, we God has more uh, for our lives than just being in a comfortable position. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you want to get ahead in this life, if you want to get ahead spiritually, then you need to make sure that God will send you out of your comfort zone. Oh, yes, he will. He'll, he'll make your comfort zone uncomfortable. That you got to make a move. You need to make a move. And sometimes change is good. Sometimes change is best for all of us. Let's look at this text and unravel this text. Because the text called God calls Abram to lead that which is familiar. And journey to a land that is unfamiliar. A land that God is going to reveal to him every step of the way. And, 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 and I tell you, at some point in the future, it got to be noted that Abram obeyed God. Before we get any further this morning, you got to understand he did exactly what God wanted him to do. Matter of fact, put Genesis 12 1 on the screen if you don't mind. Amen. Genesis 12 1. Look what he says. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country. Leave your relatives. Leave your father's family. And I'm going to take you to a land that I will show you. He had to leave his country. He had to leave his place of birth. He had to leave his relatives, those who he was associated with. Listen to the text. Listen to what God is telling this man. He had to leave his father's house, a place of security. And here God is commanding him and compelling him. If you're going to be blessed, you got to make a move. Abram, you got to make a move because to go to a place that was unknown to him. And many of us do not like the unknown. We want to be in a place that we are known and we are comfortable. But I'm telling you, the blessings is not in comfort. The blessing is being agitated to move to another level of your life. I come today to just share an encouraging word to you today. As a result of his obedience, Abram gained more than he had left. Oh, yeah, because and became the father of the faith. Why, why we are preaching Abraham? Because he showed us how to live uh, outside of uh, the comfort zone. That's what he did. That's what he did. And my brothers and sisters, whenever God instructs you to give up something, He'll always bless you with more. Whenever, whenever he, he, he gives a command that you need to make a move, he's always going to give you more. I, I feel y'all this morning, y'all quiet, you're soft, you're afraid. Now I'm talking about moving outside of you, some Moraine. All I know is Tipton County. All I know is lot of that County. And you're telling me that I need to leave where I am so comfortable with. Well, may that, that is what I'm saying. You need to make a move because God has something greater for your life. Uh, can, I, can I preach? Can I come a little bit closer to you today? Matter of fact, there's a statement I want y'all to remember. We're going to put it on the screen a few times, but maybe the end of the sermon, you'll know what this statement is. Can y'all put it up there uh, this morning so they can get it down in their spirit? 
a giant in, in the giant that's in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with us. Can I say that one more time? The giant that is in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with you. Can, can y'all read that back to me? The giant that is in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with you. <laughs> So if you take Genesis 12 and 1 and you wrap Genesis 12 and 1 around your mind, no matter how difficult it may be to leave your comfort zone, remember now that God is bigger than your comfort zone. Oh, preach me right now. Oh, yes, yes, brothers and sisters. The, so this is what happened to Job when Job lost everything he had. The Bible says in Job 42 and 12 that God, the Lord, blessed the latter end of Job more than he did in the beginning. And I want to tell somebody today, that's what God is waiting on you to do because he wants to bless your latter years and make them better than your years right now. Look at the text because the text, if you put verse 2 up there, look how many times God said, Abram, if you obey me, if you do what I say, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And you will be a blessing uh, to others. Put verse 3 on there. They didn't get it. Look what he says. He's, I will. I will bless those who bless you and I'm going to curse those who treat you with contempt and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you God is going to bless you to bless somebody else y'all, y'all, y'all done missed it because we're so accustomed to us and me but his, this is not a us and me conversation This is about God uh, taking us outside of who we are and telling us right up front, I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you. I will make your name great. I'm going to do it just because you obey me. Y'all didn't got it, so let's go backwards. In chapter 11, so y'all didn't like chapter 12, let's go backwards and fast. We'll go backwards. Chapter 12, chapter 11, verse 4. Can y'all put that on the screen? Genesis 11 and 4. He gives us a word and he tells, look at what the people of Israel was doing. They were talking about us and me. They said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that's going to reach into the sky. This is going to make us a famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. Listen, us going to build a city. Us going to make, we're going to make us famous and we're going to keep us from being scattered. Y'all, y'all done miss it. It's about a us and me mentality. But God says not about a us and me. When you get to chapter 12, it's not about you doing anything. It's about what I'm going to do. If you get outside your comfort zone, he said, I will bless you. Anybody here believe God can bless you? Y'all going to make me pray. Anybody here believe he will bless you? He said, look look what he tells Abram. He said, I will bless you bless you I will make your name great I will bless those folk that's going to bless you and I'm going to curse those that curse you he keeps saying I will and I'm receiving it right now that God is going to do it, do for me what he, I, he has never done in my life if I get outside of my comfort all of us all of us ask, you got to ask yourself what is my comfort zone well, what, what is your comfort zone you know uh, am I a prisoner in a relationship that's going nowhere? Uh, let me take my time. Uh, uh, does, does my lack of faith in God prevent me from stepping out of the old into the new? Is my faith so weak that I cannot trust God to get me back to another level of my life? They, they, but, uh, but am I? Ask yourself, am I stuck like Chuck? Am I I sitting here preventing God from doing something in my life? When God wants to bless your life, but you sit right there and not move at all because God is trying to tell somebody on your pew that I'm going to bless you. 
I will uh, make your name great. I know you've had a tough year, but God came. I come to tell you today, God said, I'm going uh, to change your situation. Listen what he said to Abraham. He said, yes, brothers and sisters, if we want to get ahead in the life for the Lord, you got to be willing to come out of your comfort zone. But how am I going to get out of my comfort zone? I got to keep telling myself, the giant that's in front of me is not bigger than the God that's with me. <laughs> y- y- y'all ought to get it when you get home. I-, I-, I don't know where I'm going, but all I know is that giant that's in front of me is never bigger than the God that's with me. <laughs> That if God say he's going to go with me, I'm going to trust him every step of the way. Lo, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. The God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And if God could give me that promise, can anybody trust that promise? That God ain't just not leaving you. He's going to be right with you through the storm, through the rain, through the heartache, through the pain. I will bless you. I got to get out of this comfort zone because my blessing is outside of this comfort zone. Get out of the comfort zone can be frightening. It can be frightening because Peter saw a Jesus walking on water. And so Lord, he said, Lord, if it be so, compel me to come to you. Bid me to come to you. And Jesus, Jesus told Peter to come. And you know what happened? Peter got out of the boat. And soon as he was, long as he was looking at Jesus, Peter was walking on water. He was walking on, he was just walking on. Never a man ever walked like that before. No, no, no. Enoch walked so close till he walked over, over into heaven. Abraham had a walk. Isaac had a walk. But nobody walked like Peter. Peter is the only one who ever walked on water. Other than Jesus, when he saw, as long as he was looking at Jesus, Peter was walking on water. But soon as Peter started looking at what he was walking on, he started sinking. And some of you all sitting right there this morning, you could be to another level, but you're looking at the wrong people. You're looking at the wrong crowd. Instead of looking at God, you're looking at the situation. And God said, don't look at the situation, watch me. As long as you're watching me, I can get you to the other side. Do I have any boat folk here today? You, you, you ain't going to say amen, but it's some, it's some boat folk in here. <laughs> so when you're boat, that means you're safe. Boat means you're secure. But the water means there's a blessing in the water that you can't get in the boat. The leaven was safe. But Peter got a blessing uh, that the other 11 didn't get. That's what Abraham is trying to tell us this morning. If you get out of your comfort zone, uh, God is going to bless you. Can you tell your pew member, this is a day that God is going to bless this pew. Talk to your pew member for a moment. Tell them the giant that's in front of you is never bigger than the God that's in you. <laughs> Y- y'all ain't got it. I mean, I mean, talk to your pew member because you might need to help somebody overcome something and tell them the giant in front of you is never bigger than the gods that's with you. Keep it on the screen. The cancer that's in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with you. The hard condition that's in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with you. The relationship that's in front of you is never bigger than the God that's with you. The pain you're in is never bigger than the God that's with you. If you know God is with you, can he handle your situation? He can handle your situation. Well, let, let, let me get you out of here because listen, listen, listen to me this morning. Just because, just maybe some of your friends and some of your relatives are your comfort zone. Maybe God wants you to leave them in order to get ahead. Ooh. You were preaching, now you're meddling. You done gone from preaching to meddling. You, you, you said, you, you say I got to leave my relatives? You got to leave some of your friends? Well, they might be your comfort zone. If you want to get ahead, you might have to leave them. 
in order to get ahead. Sometimes new people cannot come into your life until you get rid of those old people. And matter of fact, you cannot keep hanging with t- in a toxic relationship that's not going any place because of new pain. But you rather stay in a toxic relationship. You rather stay in a relationship that's a being abusive to you than to step outside of that priest morena. God has a blessing to you outside of that relationship. But you're so comfortable where you are. My God, so I got somebody new. And if you, if you do get out of the comfort zone, listen to what God say he's going to do. I'm going to bless you. I told y'all, if y'all didn't want to have church, I ain't going to have church either. But I'll tell you one thing, I ain't going to let nobody get out of here to hanging in your comfort zone. I got about 10 more minutes of preaching and you ought to be saying amen right there. Because y'all don't say it too fast. Wait, wait, wait a minute, I said I got 10 more, everybody want to shout. I got, you know, just calm down, we're going to get out, just calm down. Everybody say amen. Ain't, some folks said amen, ain't said amen all morning. But when I say I got 10 more minutes of preaching, amen. Amen, amen. They they put an A on it, Johnny. They used it, amen. But they really said amen because they really want to get it. But I tell you, I can't let you go if you're going to stay in your comfort zone. But if you want to get out of your comfort zone, we can get out of church here real early. Because if you did get out of your comfort zone, uh, you will never experience the blessings of God. Ooh, you'll never experience the blessings that God has for you. Until you walk out of that comfort zone. You'll never experience the blessings. You'll never reach your full potential. As long as you stay in the confines of that comfort zone. You, you, will, you, will, you will regret being oh, disobedient to God if you don't move out of that comfort zone. Abraham would have never been a father of, a, of the faithful, father of a nation if he just said, no God, I got to stay here. But you know what Abraham did? He obeyed God. When he heard God said move, Abraham moved. You know who he took with him? He took his, took his nephew Lot with him. Are y'all here? He took his wife with him. But he said everybody else got to stay. Because I can't take no baggage with me. I got to move on out of here. Because God has something prepared for my life. Brothers and sisters, that's what I come here today on this first Sunday in June to tell somebody this is your day. To take a step at a time and move outside of your comfort zone. In my closing moment, you need to take one step. Can y'all say take one step at a time? If you're going to make it outside of it, you can't make giant steps. Just take one step at a time. And when you take one step at a time, God will meet you where you start. When you take one step at a time, I know you can't move too quickly. You might be overwhelmed if you go too fast. You might fall and fail if you move too fast. But if you just stay right there and take one step at a time, God will bless you every step of the way. Can't you see Abram leaving Haran, going to a land he knew not of? But he said, Abram, let me tell you what's going to happen. If you look up in the sky, you can see all the stars in the sky. As many stars that you see in the sky, that's how I'm going to bless your family. But you got to make a move. You got to boost, boost. You got to make a move and go into a land you don't know of. Are y'all here today? That's what has to happen with you. You got to make a move. I'm a risky person. I do take risk. I take a chance. I take a chance. But every chance I've ever taken, God met me along the way. Are y'all here? I, I shall never forget buying purchasing my first house. It was more money than I was making. Are y'all here? But God told me to go get it. And he helped me every step of the way. And I came to tell you, and when I made one step, God will make another step. But you got to walk in faith and, and believe God is going to bless you every step of the way. And then when I got ready to sell that house, I went and bought another house, built it from the ground. There was more money, Chris, than I could pay for. But God told me to take a step, and I made a step on another level. 
And I tell you, I made every mortgage payment. I made everything I needed because I stepped out in faith. You can't take everybody with you because some family member will tell you you can't afford to buy that. They'll tell you you don't, you don't make enough money to purchase that car. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, God will make a way out of no way. Anybody here know he'll do it? Ask anybody know he'll do that. All I'm trying to get y'all to see is that the giant that's in front of you is not bigger than the God that's with you. Good morning, St. Luke. That's all I came to tell somebody, that I got God on my side. And if God is on your side, he'll bless you on the next level. Won't he do it? Do I have 10 people here that believe if you make a step, God will make another step. Do I have 10 folk here have stepped out in faith, didn't know how you were going to make it, didn't know how you are going to pay for it, but won't God provide? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? It's some retired folk here accustomed to making money every week or every two weeks, but now they got to do it once a month. But is there any retired folk here that know that God will meet you every month and help you make the ends to the end of the month? Y'all ain't going to say, man, I says, anybody here that's been retired and you ain't missed a beat yet? Has anybody here been retired and God still making a way, still providing, you still eating, uh, and he all right? Still buying what you need to buy. I'm done with y'all here. But won't God make a way out of no way? Goodbye, y'all. That's all I came to tell. You need to make one step. And if you make one step, God will make another step. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Matter of fact, he'll push you into another situation. I need to push somebody. Somebody here needs to be healed. I need to push you to your healing. Push you to that new job. Ain't he all right? Tell your pew member, pew member, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Ain't he all right? Tell your pew member, the giant that's in front of me, ain't he all right? It's not bigger than the gods that's with me. Not he need to hear from y'all. Take it off the screen and I'm done preaching. Let me hear from them for a moment. Can y'all repeat that statement? The giant... Man, y'all all. Man, y'all, y'all, y'all sound like y'all was here. I don't know what your giant might be. I don't know where God told you to go, but I know one thing: that my giant is not bigger than my God. Ain't he all right? You better come here, Goliath, and preach up in here today. All David had was five smooth stones. Ain't he all right? And a pocket in the stones. And the Bible said Goliath was a nine feet tall giant. But the David said, I got him. I can handle him. Ain't he all right? Everybody laughed at David and said, you must be losing your mind. Just a small ruddy boy with five smooth stones. But David says, that's all right. I got this. Let me tell you my resume. I was wrestling with a bear and God helped me overcome a bear. I saw a lion and God helped me tear a lion to pieces. So if I can handle a bear, if I can handle a lion, I can handle this giant. 
Ain't he all right? Ain't nothing too hard for God. Ain't he all right? The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that David told Elijah, meet me on the mountain. Elijah started laughing at him. The Bible said, David said, you stand there. He pulled out a slingshot. He pulled out one stone and put it in the slingshot. He ran back in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. Sit the rock, hit him in his head. And he all right, say yes. Hit him in the head and the giant fell down. And he all right, but the Bible says he had five smooth stones. He didn't take but one to take him down. But he had four more rocks in his pocket. And he all right, because I need them to hear this. He had four more in his pocket because Goliath had four more brothers. And just in case they stick their head up, I got one for every brother. Ain't he all right? I came to tell somebody, when God blesses you, he bless you with enough to handle your enemies. Ain't he all right? I'm done. But one more time, I need y'all to help me. Come on, say my statement. Can y'all say it out loud without reading it? The giant, come on now, the giants, the giants that's in front of you. Are y'all here? It's not bigger than the gods that's with you. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, let's get this. Neighbor, neighbor, let's get blessed. Let's get healed. Let's get delivered. Look down your row and tell your pew member whatever the giant is in front of you is not bigger than the gods that's with you. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Walter, Walter Mack, Pastor Walter Mack is a pastor in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. One day, Walter got on an airplane. And while he was on the airplane, he came on just humming. Jesus is the center of my joy. He's out just humming. Jesus is the center of my joy. And when he got on the plane in first class, he was still humming. He said, because my seat was in coach, but I was humming this in first class. And he said, when I was humming, there was a lady sitting in first class. She said, sir, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from. But she said, I'm having a hard time. She said, I'm sick. I'm on my way to cancer hospital. And she said, I need, if you don't mind, would you pray for me? Max stopped right where he was and prayed over this lady. And when he got done praying over this lady, he went on back to his seat in coach. His seat was so far back the laboratory was right behind his back. Y- y'all get it when you get home. He-, he was sitting on the last seat in the plane. But while he was sitting there, the airline stewardess came up to him. And she said, I don't normally do this. I don't usually get in nobody's conversation. But she said, I heard you pray for a lady in first class. And here you are Liz, sitting in last class. Last seat coach. She said, because you did that, I'm going to take you from this seat and I'm going to put you in first class. I came to tell somebody, 
the great agent in the sky. The great agent in the sky. He see you in coach. But don't you know he'll bring you to first class? Anybody here know he'll bring you to first Come on now. Won't he do it? That was, Ken, that was Mac's story. But Moraine got his own story. I've never written in first class. But one day, the plane got crowded. Are y'all here? My seat was in coach. And they said, sir, would you mind moving to first class? I said, ma'am. Because I know some stuff going in first class that don't happen in second class. So y'all don't want to have church in here. I said, ma'am, can, did, did I hear what you said? She said, yes, we kind of fool. And, 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 but, but you sitting right here behind first class. Would you mind moving for somebody? I said, ma'am, I said, ma'am, you know, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to run out the seat, but I said, ma'am, yeah. I, I'll move. I'll bust a move right here. I ain't trying to run over nobody, but I, I said, man, where she said, you can sit right here. The seat is wider. The seat is comfortable. And they start bringing me some stuff I wasn't going to get in the back. Y'all don't hear me say it, man. I ain't going to tell you everything I got because y'all might leave church, but I got some stuff I wasn't going to get in the back. And I didn't have to pay for it. I need y'all to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody here. I didn't have to pay for it. But I got everything. Now you can put it, you can read anything you want in it. But I got everything. They were serving in first class. You can judge me all, but I got everything. I got it. Can I holler? I got everything. God, won't God bless you? And won't it take it from the last to the first? Do I have ten folk in here to know God would take it from the last? And put you up front. From you. When you obey God, come on now and sing today. He'll do it. He's the center of You're my joy. You're the heart of my contentment. My, 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 my. Hope, Hope for all. all I do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Jesus. <laughs> You're the center, center of my joy. My joy. So if y'all help him sing. The agent in the sky might hear you, might move your seat. When I lost my direction, you're the comfort for my soul. Oh, hallelujah. You're the fire light mm. when the nights are long oh. and cold. You are the laughter. The door of the church is open. If you come this morning, you can move from the last seat. You can come to the first seat. When I'm all Abraham went from a land he didn't know nothing about. To hold. He'll be right there to hold you. To You believe it today? Can you stand all of it and help them sing today? Come on, chorus, sing. The center of my joy. Oh, my joy. oh Jesus. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Everything. 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 Yeah. 
Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. He's the center of my joy. To God be the goal. You got to move out of your comfort zone. When you take a step, I promise you, he's going to take another step. I know you're afraid. I know you're frustrated. But why stay in a frustrated situation when God says, I got a land for you that's flowing with milk and honey? The door of the church is open for you to come this morning. Candidate for baptism, Christian experience, this is your opportunity. So to surrender to God. You got to make a step. You got to make a decision somewhere in your life. You must make a decision. Will you come today? We offer Christ to you. That's what they're saying. We offer Christ to you. Give you a brand new life. What a beautiful song. I offer Christ to you. Hallelujah today. Oh, hallelujah today. Will you come? Come to Christ. We are from the balcony to the floor. We are offering Christ to you. My brother, my sister, we are offering him. You got to take, go to the unknown, change the known, move from the known to the unknown, familiar to the unfamiliar. That new job is waiting on you, but you have to make a decision to trust God to get you through whatever situation you're in. You need to get out the boat this morning. Step out in the water. Because that's where your healing is. Your deliverance is outside your comfort zone. Hallelujah today. Oh yes, your goodness and mercy for us. And your mercy. For us, we offer Christ to you. You cry. Let the church say amen today. What a great hymn. What a great song this morning. We offer Christ to you today. God bless you. May God keep you. I pray that this little speech will help you get outside of your comfort zone. You got to make a step. One step at a time. You would never be in that business if you had never made a step. If you kept lift, listening to people, they'd tell you, you can't do it. You can't afford it. But actually, you can't afford not to. <laughs> you really can't afford not to make a move toward God. God bless you. May God keep you today. There's room, but yet there's none. We pray now as we receive our announcements today uh, on this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah today. St. Jude is an ongoing gift that we give to those who are in need at St. Jude that we pray that you will uh, certainly give to St. Jude on a regular basis. Donate something. You can go pick it up. Bring it. Uh, you don't have to give any money. You can just go buy it yourself. But listen, the people that get these items monthly from us they don't have, they, they are taking care of a child that has cancer. They live here, but they're not from here. They don't pay one dime to be at St. Jude. It's all based on donations. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? Families are being blessed. Their bills are being paid even while they're here taking care of that child. 
So for you to donate something, what you're doing is adding to that blessing of where they live in the McDonald's house. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Also, continue this morning uh, with our the summer camp. We would have a summer camp from July 17th to the 27th. We need in volunteers. There's a volunteer meeting today that you need to attend uh, so we can make sure uh, everybody get, get all the information that, you, that is needed to help us with this, um, with this summer camp. It is a need. Uh, the kids are back in school. Many are back in school right now. And we want to be able to, after they're done with their, uh, their school, uh, summer school, we want to be a blessing here for them. It's a free camp. And we want to be a blessing to them. Amen? Amen. So volunteer. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do our registration or whatever it takes. We need, we need you to help with, 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 this, with, this, with this camp. Amen. I will be in revival this week from Tuesday through Thursday in Memphis at Greater New Shallow Church. I will be online Monday and Tuesday, but I will not be back online at 6 o'clock until whatever the Monday is, at 12. Amen. So I won't double dip. I'm only doing it today. Amen. So, so if you're listening, even to those who listen online, it's great, I guess, to do it. There was a lady that we missed a week, a few days. A lady came to church that Sunday because she said, I ain't seen him all week. I need to, I haven't been on, y'all ain't, what's, what's going on? She thought we was off. She thought we wasn't coming back on, so she came to church uh, from, I think, Haywood County. And, but, but we praise God that, that we will be back on, but we're going to miss some days. Amen. This Saturday, uh, the 17th, I think I can't see that. That's what that is. On the 17th is a credit, uh, repairing your credit, moving in the directions of making your life better. We need you here on the 17th. Invite your friends, uh, your family uh, to come. Now, if you've got credit problems, nothing to be ashamed of. The shame of is not trying to get it straight. That, that's ridiculous. And we need you to do that. Ms. Henry Jones is going to come about the curl of purple uh, this morning, and we're done for today. Amen. 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 St. Luke, Good morning. Good morning. I'm standing before you because the president or one of the leaders of the women department is not here. And uh, we are planning, the women department is planning uh, out, a day out for the women th so we all can get together and know each other and uh, have a good time. And we want to go to See the color purple at the Hattie Lou Theater. It's set for August the 5th that we should attend. But we need a head count because as anybody know, Hattie Lou is a small, quaint theater. And we wish to fill it out with the women of St. Luke. To do that, we need a head count as soon as today. She has sent out some uh, emails but some did not get it, some could not say where they were coming or not coming or attend or would not attend. So that's why I'm standing before you to let you know. We're going to have uh, uh, Ms. Irma Williams in the back foyer. We're going to have Ms. Jackie Ties in the back and also myself to sign up. If you could write your numbers down or email addresses, we can uh, let you know what the tickets will cost because the cheapest ticket is $20. That's if we uh, have a certain number in the group. Amen. Amen. And the highest ticket is 25 So it's just a $5 difference. You just won't get able to get french fries with your hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> so we would like to get the count as soon as possible. And we, like I said, we want to fill the theater with St. Luke Missionary Baptist Church from Covington, Tennessee. 
Amen. So as soon Amen. as we can get that count, we'll be able to move forward and more information will be coming to you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Come on now, ladies, come on now. Now you got the cost, so don't, you already know what it costs. Twenty dollars, uh, the minimum cost, and twenty-five dollars with French fries. So. <laughs> so that's the cost. And we, we, whatever you say, how do you do it? Thirty-four years is a long time. Amen. And I'm about the. I'm, I'm not the oldest pastor. I'm pretty much both. Uh, senior pastor and been here longer than most churches in this community. So it's a great joy. Amen. Because I serve some of the greatest people in the county. Yeah. Thank you. So some of the greatest people that are connected to serve. So we certainly will be grateful to have you on next Sunday. Let us all stand. Oh, first Sunday, I'm sorry. Community. Praise the Lord. And I thank y'all. Y'all want to do it. God bless you. Come on, laugh. If Christians can't laugh, who can? Come on. What a joy, I tell you, to be able to take this this morning. What a joy. What a joy. Such a worm as I. <laughs> oh, yes. What a crime I won, I had come. Oh, hallelujah. What a great hymn today. What a great hymn of the church. know the chorus of that song at the cross where I first and the burden of my heart was rolled away oh it was there by faith I received
Bible says, let every person examine themselves. We pray now before you eat and drink that you would examine your own life, confess your own sins this morning as we bow our heads. God, forgive us of our sins, our sins of omission as well as commission. God, I pray today, God, that we thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the shed blood and the broken body. We bless your name today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. He took the bread, he broke it, he said, this is my body. He said, drink this. He said, eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Can we all eat together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Likewise, he took the cup of the New Testament. This is my blood. He said, drink this. Do this in remembrance of me as we drink together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. this morning. I certainly want to pray for Danielle uh, that God bring deliverance and healing to their, to their life this morning. Amen. Amen. We'll continue to pray for uh, Bill War uh, this morning. Bill is in Baptist East Hospital. We just pray that God will continue to strengthen him on um, this morning. Praying for the Mount Pisgah Baptist Church and the passing of uh, Pastor Basil Brooks yeah. on this morning yeah. that God would certainly uh, bless that church yeah. as they grieve their pastor of many, many yeah. years, over 40 something years that he's been a pastor of that church. Amen. 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 Let us all stand. God, I gave them what you gave me. Yeah. I pray, God, that we'll move outside of our comfort zone. Because you can bring us from last to first. And I praise you right now for Jesus Christ. We give you honor. We give you praise in the marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you, prep, present you, present you faultless in the presence of Almighty God. To the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, his power, dominion, both now and forevermore. And all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Turn and shake hands with somebody. Tell them, move outside of your comfort zone. Move outside of your comfort zone. 